Hello everybody and welcome back to part 2 of my Purple Pain series. Okay, let's get right down to business. In order to perform the mission that I have planned, of course, we need some kind of return vehicle for the crew. And in order to transport the return vehicle to EVE, we need sort of a transfer vehicle. This here, this little three-piece claw type of thing vehicle is it. I call it the Asinus from the Latin word for mule. And well, it's heading right into orbit over here. I'm keeping the orbiting stage attached still for because maybe I need some more of that power for some rendezvous burns and whatnot. Just in case. Okay. But now let's get to the return vehicle. And I don't have any special name for it, since it is the return vehicle, I just call it the RV. And it's still inside the fairing heading up into the atmosphere. As I mentioned in my previous video, this thing is designed to land on EVE and head back up into the atmosphere, well out of the atmosphere and into orbit. And in order to do that, it has to mine some fuel, because I can't... Well, I don't want to send it with all the fuel packing inside, otherwise it would weigh more than 300 tons. And as it is now, without the fuel, it's just about 100 and something tons, which is much more manageable, especially if you think about parachutes and landing gear and whatnot. But of course we want to get these two things together. So let's separate the final stage from the RV. Come on, get back there. Just clearing away some of that fairing debris. And let's head down to the surface. This thing is autonomous, so maybe we can stick a landing with this. Who knows? Okay, but the first order of business is to get these two things together, the RV and the Asinus. Asinus, Asinus, whatever. In order to do that, we have to ditch the other stage from the transfer vehicle, and I have already aligned the RV in such a way that I just have to move my transfer vehicle over there. On its own, it has more than 10,000 meters per second of delta V, which I reckon will be enough with the RV attached to get it to EVE. And then, of course, come back to Kerbin, because we need that thing to transport the crew with the next tra transfer window. Okay, after some night side docking, I wanted to show you the whole assembly in daylight. There it is. And of course, as I mentioned before, I tried to land that final stage of the RV orbiting vehicle. But maybe it had enough delta V, but I messed it up. Anyways, okay, SpaceX, I am not. Moving on. Now, after some maneuver node editing, I came up with a rendezvous at EVE after about 1000 meters per second uh, of a burn that I have to do, which you can see me do here and which I will skip ahead for your viewing pleasure. And after some adjustments I had to make further on down the orbit, I finally got my rendezvous, well, encounter rather. And here we can see the SNS leaving Kerbin. And we're already in Eve's sphere of influence and I'm adjusting my periaps a little bit closer so I can benefit from the Oberth effect. And I also want to change my inclination a bit because we're coming in quite steeply over here. So once again, another big burn to get ourselves in a safe parking orbit around that purple pane of a planet. 
So yeah, we're at the final stages of that burn and we're still quite inclined. So what to do here? Well, I wanted to uh, reduce that inclination and in order to do that I used Kerbal Engineer Redux, which showed me the exact time to the ascending or descending node where I time warped the vehicle to and then I changed my inclination accordingly. So we are closing in on the descending node or ascending node, not sure. And we're burning a bit to get that inclination down to almost zero. There you go, you see the inclination dropping as fast as I can fire that rocket. And this is looking very good, almost a flat orbit. Well, now we've gone and done that, we just have to circularize this thing a bit more. These were a few passes around EVE, because I wanted to use the orbit effect to its maximum. And after a few of those, I managed to circularize. So. Now comes the tricky and quite nail-biting and scary part. Getting this thing safely down to the surface. So we have uh, a small descent stage that I'm going to fire. And as you can see here, the trick is to get the deceleration burn just right so that I would land closely to my indicator where I wanted this thing put. And I realized I forgot to put a bit of fuel in the outwards boosters. Why, you may ask? Well, to slow down the descent on the final few meters so I don't crash down too hard on the landing gear. But I thought the descent stage has enough fuel anyway, so I would drop some of it into my boosters. Okay, fingers crossed, let's get down to the surface. You may wonder why I have that kind of, well, shuttlecock kind of thing, that kind of arrow in the back. This thing is well designed to keep this uh, monstrosity stable in the weird weird and wild atmosphere of EVE. And also the heat shield was designed to keep it cool. Unfortunately the drills didn't get the memo. As you can see here even though they are safely behind the heat shield they are heating up like hotcakes. And yeah. Again. 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 Okay, there was no way I could save those drills. I'm guessing this is a bug in Kerbal Space Program and well you've seen here what time acceleration can do with uh, a heat shield not properly attached or even if it's properly attached. But besides those drills and one of the solar panels I managed to slow down fine. So yeah, we're ditching the stabilization device in the back and we can already deploy our parachutes in addition to our air brakes. So we're descending to the thick atmosphere provided by environmental visual enhancements. And yeah, I tried to simulate this landing a few thousand times. Well, I'm exaggerating, of course, but many, 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 many times, dozens of times, I tried to do this in some kind of simulation in another save game. And every time, no matter what I put on there, uh, be it radiators or some heat shields below them and whatnot, 
the drills would always explode. It seems like they had a mind of their own. Well, so yeah. Even though I managed to land fine in, well, a place that was fortunately flat enough and also high enough. I did not manage to land exactly where I intended, because that was really, really, really a lot harder than I expected. Okay, ditching those parachute modules, I don't need them anymore. I got my little Nat rover back to the RV to check on the concentration of ore over there. It's a lot worse than in my intended landing place, but at least there is ore. So let's see what we'll do to get some drills to this thing in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.